I've often pondered the journey of success, and one key element always stands out. The sheer force of will to get things done. It's like sailing a ship. You can have the finest vessel, the best crew, but without setting a course and pushing forward, you'll simply drift. Today, I want to talk about that. The art of pushing yourself, of moving beyond the ordinary to achieve the extraordinary. Imagine, if you will, a person much like any one of us standing at the crossroads of decision. Every day, we face these crossroads moments where our choices define us. And in these moments, it's not just about making decisions, but about making the right decisions. Now, I'm not talking about choosing what to have for breakfast. I'm talking about the choices that scare us, that push us, that force us out of our comfort zones. You see, there's a powerful force within each of us, a force often untapped. It's the ability to compel ourselves to do what needs to be done, even when everything in us wants to procrastinate or avoid it. Think about the last time you really didn't want to do something. Maybe it was a tough conversation, maybe it was a project that seemed insurmountable. We've all been there, haven't we? That moment where the easier choice is to say, I'll do it tomorrow. But here's the thing. Tomorrow becomes the next day, and the next, and soon enough, what was a molehill becomes a mountain. In these moments, the difference between success and stagnation is action. Action is the foundational key to all success. It's not just about having knowledge or talent. It's about using that knowledge, harnessing that talent. You could have the intellect of Einstein, but without action, it's like having a library of books that you never read. So, how do we tap into this force? How do we push ourselves to take action, especially when it's tough? Well, that's the journey we're on together today. It's about understanding the why behind the what. It's about learning to embrace the discomfort of growth, because growth and comfort do not coexist. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. Everything affects everything else, nothing stands alone. Don't be naive and say, well, this doesn't matter. I'm telling you, everything matters. There are some things that matter more than others, but there isn't anything that doesn't matter. We all pity the man who says, this is the only place I let down, but that's not true. The key takeaway. Every letdown affects the rest of your performance. Every letdown affects the rest. This is part of the educational process on personal development. If you don't take the walk around the block, you probably won't do the apple a day. If you don't do the apple a day, you probably won't start building your library. If you don't build your library, you probably won't keep a journal, and you won't take pictures, and you won't do wise things with your money, with your time, with your possibilities and relationships. And the first thing you know, six years of that accumulated, and we say, you have messed up. So, the whole key to reversing that process now is to start picking up these disciplines. The smallest action, the least action, the action that you won't think will matter, it all matters. Take it, because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return, you'll find inspiration to do the next one, and the next one, and the next one. But for this whole process to work for us, we must first master the art of discipline. Self-discipline. Consistent self-discipline. It doesn't really matter how smart you are or how much you know if you don't use it. It doesn't really matter if you attended every seminar that comes to town if you don't apply what you've learned. Better than knowledge is applied knowledge. And once we've applied our knowledge, we must study the results of that process. Apply our knowledge, study the results, refine our approach. Pretty soon, we'll find that we're swept into a spiral of achievement, a vertical rise to success. It takes consistent self-discipline to master the art of setting goals, to master the art of time management, to master the art of leadership, to master the art of parenting and relationships. If we don't make consistent self-discipline part of our daily lives, the results we seek will be sporadic and elusive. It takes a consistent effort to truly manage our valuable time, or we'll be consistently frustrated. Our time will be eaten up by others whose demands are stronger than our own. It takes discipline to conquer the nagging voices in our minds. The fear of failure, the fear of success, the fear of poverty, the fear of a broken heart. It takes discipline to keep trying when that nagging voice within us brings up the possibility of failure. It takes discipline to admit our errors and recognize our limitations. The voice of the human ego speaks to all this sometimes. It says that we should magnify our value beyond our results. It leads us to exaggerate, to not be totally honest. It takes discipline to be totally honest, both with ourselves and with others. 
It takes discipline to change a habit because habits are formed a little bit each day, every day, every day. Once habits are formed, they act like a giant cable, an unbreakable instinct that only long-term disciplined activity can change. I want you to think about a goal, a dream, something you've been putting off. Hold that in your mind as we embark on this discussion because today isn't just about theories and words. It's about transformation. It's about turning, I can't, into, I will. And believe me, the journey from, I can't, to, I will, is where all the magic happens. Let's dive into this together, shall we? Let's explore how we can harness this force within us, how we can turn the tide in our favor and truly set sail towards our dreams. Remember, it's not just about the destination, it's about the journey. And this journey is about discovering the incredible power of self-discipline, the power to move mountains, the power to change our lives. Begin this adventure together with open minds and willing hearts. Let's commit to ourselves, to our dreams, to the journey of forcing ourselves to get it done, no matter what. Remember, the only limits that exist are the ones we place on ourselves. Let's break those barriers and soar to new heights. It's not just about the goal. It's about who we become in the process of reaching that goal. It's about the strength we gain, the wisdom we acquire, and the character we build. Imagine for a moment a world where everyone exercised perfect self-discipline. Picture people following through on every promise they made. Imagine the achievements, the transformations. Now, I know what you're thinking. That world sounds ideal, perhaps too good to be true. But here's the secret. That world begins with you. It starts the moment you decide to take control of your life. You see, self-discipline is about taking responsibility. It's about making choices, not excuses. It, that's about saying no to the things that harm us and yes to the things that help us grow. It's about making a commitment to yourself and keeping it. It's easy to be disciplined when someone is watching, but true self-discipline is what you do when no one is looking. It's the choices you make in those quiet, unseen moments that truly define who you are. Here's the greatest value of discipline. Self-worth, self-esteem. People are teaching self-esteem these days, but they don't connect it to discipline. The slightest lack of discipline starts to erode our psyche. It's one of the greatest temptations to just ease up a little bit, right? The slightest lack of doing your best starts to erode the psyche. Instead of doing your best, doing just a little less than your best. Sure enough, you say, well, it's just going to affect my sales. No, it's going to affect your consciousness. It's going to affect your philosophy. Now you've begun, in the slightest way, to affect your own philosophy. But don't forget, self-discipline is also a challenge. It's a muscle that needs constant exercise. And just like any muscle, he can tire, he can feel strained. But that's just a sign that it's growing stronger. Each time you push through the temptation to give up, you're not just moving one step closer to your goal, you're also building your self-discipline muscle. You're teaching yourself that you can do hard things, that you can overcome challenges. And this, in itself, is a victory. Think about the last time you really pushed yourself, when you went beyond your comfort zone. Maybe it was working on a project late into the night, or perhaps it was saying no to a temptation that would have derailed your progress. How did you feel afterward? Exhausted, maybe, but also exhilarated, right? That feeling, that's the power of self-discipline. Self-discipline also means being able to delay gratification. It's about seeing the bigger picture, understanding that the pain of discipline now is nothing compared to the pain of regret later. It's about choosing long-term satisfaction over short-term comfort. This is where many falter, mistaking the easy road for the right road. But not you. You're here because you're ready to choose the right road, no matter how challenging it may be. Remember, self-discipline doesn't mean living a life of restriction. It means living a life of balance. It's about knowing when to work hard and when to rest, when to push yourself and when to recharge. It's about listening to your body, your mind, and your heart. It's about harmony. When you master self-discipline, you're not just mastering a skill, you're mastering life itself. And be clear. Mastering self-discipline doesn't mean you'll never fail or falter. We're all human, after all. It's about how you respond to those failures. Do you let them defeat you, or do you use them as stepping stones to greater success? Every setback, every obstacle is an opportunity to practice self-discipline, to get back up, dust yourself off and move forward with even more determination. Now, let's turn our focus to a challenge that many of us face. The twin hurdles of procrastination and laziness. These are not just inconveniences. 
They're the thieves of time, the enemies of progress. They sneak up on us, whispering sweet lies of later and Sunday. But let me tell you, later is a dream killer, and Sunday is a thief of potential. Procrastination and laziness, they're like quicksand. The more we give in, the deeper we sink, and the harder it becomes to pull ourselves out. How often have we said, I'll start tomorrow, only to find that tomorrow brings its own set of excuses. It's a cycle, a dangerous loop that spins us around and keeps us from moving forward. But here's the good news. Just as we can fall into the cycle, we can also break free from it. The key? Action. Immediate, deliberate action. It's the antidote to procrastination, the enemy of laziness. Don't be lazy in learning. Don't be lazy in picking up the ideas. Don't be lazy in learning from your own experience. Get serious. Life is serious. We call it life or death. If you want to live a good, long, flourishing life, you've got to push back. You can't just give in. You've got to push back. That's what these principles are for, to help you push back. And we're dealing with some serious matters here, so we can't just tell the latest 10 jokes and go home. We're not here to entertain. We're here to instruct, to grow, to learn, to get the best we possibly can. Serious. Life is serious. The future is serious. Now, I know what you're thinking, but it's hard to start. And you're right, it is hard. Starting is often the hardest part. But remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. It's about taking that first small step. It doesn't have to be a leap, just a step. The magic lies in the momentum you create once you start. It's like pushing a car. The initial push takes all your might, but once it starts rolling, it gets easier. So, how do we start? First, by setting clear, achievable goals. Goals that excite us, that ignite a fire within us. When your goal is clear, your focus sharpens and procrastination loses its power. Then, break these goals into smaller, bite-sized tasks so small that it seems almost ridiculous not to do them. It's about tricking the mind, making the task seem so easy, so doable that procrastination has no room to creep in. And what about laziness? Laziness thrives in the absence of a compelling why. You need a why? That's so powerful, so compelling that it pulls you out of the comfort of inaction. Your why should be like a beacon, guiding you through the fog of laziness, reminding you of the bigger picture, the reason you're doing what you're doing. Remember, it's not just about the external goals. It's also about respecting yourself. Every time you overcome procrastination, every time you choose action over inaction, you're building self-respect. You're telling yourself, I am worth the effort. My dreams are worth the effort. And believe me, there's no feeling quite like looking in the mirror and knowing you've kept a promise to yourself. That's the kind of self-respect that builds empires, that changes lives. Our environment plays a crucial role in overcoming procrastination and laziness. Surround yourself with reminders of your goals, with people who inspire you to act. Create an environment that encourages productivity, one that makes it easier to start and harder to quit. Remember, our surroundings often shape our actions. Make yours a breeding ground for success. And don't forget the power of routine. A solid, well-structured routine can be a fortress against the onslaught of procrastination and laziness. When you have a routine, you don't need to waste energy deciding what to do next. It's already laid out for you. This frees up mental space for creativity, for productivity. Overcoming these challenges is not just about brute force. It's also about understanding the root cause. Ask yourself, why am I procrastinating? What am I avoiding? Often, procrastination is a symptom of fear. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of stepping out of our comfort zone. Address these fears, confront them, and you'll find that procrastination loses its grip on you. And in those moments when you do fall prey to procrastination or laziness, don't be too hard on yourself. Remember, we're all human. The key is not to dwell in that space. Acknowledge it, learn from it, and then step back into action with renewed vigor. Celebrate your victories, no matter how small. Every task completed, every moment of laziness overcome is a victory. Celebrate these, cherish them. Now, armed with these principles, go forth and conquer. The journey of self-discipline is not an easy one, but it is a rewarding one. It's the path to greatness, to fulfillment, to a life well lived. So, embrace the discomfort, push through the pain, and keep moving forward. Your dreams are waiting for you on the other side of self-discipline. Go get them. They are the stepping stones to greater successes.
It becomes clear that the building blocks of success are often the smallest ones. I'm talking about habits. Yes, habits. Those little routines, those daily acts that we do almost without thinking. They might seem insignificant on their own, but cumulatively they hold the power to transform our lives. This is where personal growth either blossoms or withers. You see, habits are like the threads in a tapestry. Each thread might seem inconsequential, but together they create a picture of our lives. The quality of our habits determines the quality of that picture. Good habits lead to a life of strength and beauty, while bad habits lead to a life that, like a poorly woven tapestry, can easily come undone. Think about this. How many of our days are spent on autopilot? We wake up, go through our routines, and before we know it, the day is gone. Now imagine if those routines, those habits, were all designed to propel you towards your goals. That's the power of intentional habit formation. But how do we form good habits? It starts with awareness. You must first become a keen observer of your own life. Ask yourself, what are my current habits? Are they serving me or holding me back? This level of self-awareness is the first step towards meaningful change. Once you've identified the habits you need to change, it's about starting small. Too often, we try to overhaul our lives overnight. That's like trying to lift a weight too heavy for us. It's unsustainable. Instead, start with small, manageable changes. Want to exercise more? Start with a 10-minute walk each day, not an hour at the gym. Small successes build momentum, and momentum leads to bigger successes. But forming new habits isn't just about doing, it's also about unlearning. It's about breaking the chains of old, unproductive habits. This is where discipline comes in, the same discipline we talked about earlier. It's about making choices that align with your new goals, even when it's uncomfortable. Remember, comfort is often the enemy of growth. Consistency is the secret ingredient in habit formation. It's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives, but what we do consistently. This might mean making small sacrifices, like waking up earlier or turning off the TV to focus on a project. These sacrifices might seem significant in the moment, but in the grand scheme of things, they're the price of success. Forming new habits is not just a solo journey. Surround yourself with people who embody the habits you want to adopt. We are, after all, social creatures, and we're heavily influenced by those around us. If you're surrounded by disciplined, focused individuals, it's much easier to adopt those traits yourself. Bear in mind that habits don't just impact our actions, they shape our identity. Every time you practice a good habit, you're not just getting closer to your goal, you're also telling yourself, this is who I am. You're building an identity as someone who takes action, who values discipline, who strives for excellence. This identity becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, propelling you forward. But be honest. Change is hard. Old habits die hard, they say. There will be days when you will falter, when the old ways will beckon. In those moments, it's crucial to remember why you started. Reflect on your goals, your dreams, your vision for your life. Remind yourself that every habit, no matter how small, is a step towards that vision. And when you do slip up, don't beat yourself up. Growth is not a linear journey. It's a series of ups and downs, successes and setbacks. What matters is not that you stumbled, but that you have the courage to get back up. Each time you do, you're strengthening your resolve, your discipline, your commitment to your new habits. Now, let's talk about the power of routine. A solid routine can serve as a framework for your habits. It gives your day structure, a rhythm that makes it easier to incorporate new habits and discard old ones. Think of it as scaffolding for your life. As you build new habits, this scaffolding supports you, guiding you upwards towards your goals. And as you work on building these habits, be patient with yourself. Habits are not formed overnight. They require time, repetition, and persistence. But the rewards are worth the effort. Imagine waking up one day and realizing that the habits you once struggled with are now second nature. That's a sign of true personal growth. How many opportunities have we allowed to slip through the hourglass of time due to the inertia induced by procrastination? It is the thief of progress, the silent killer of aspirations. Today, I challenge you to break free from its shackles, to embrace the power of decisive action. For it is through action that we carve our destinies. Negativity, like a corrosive force, can eat away at the foundation of our dreams. Whether it's negative thoughts that erode our self-belief or negative influences that sap our vitality, it's time to bid farewell to the toxic embrace of negativity. 
Surround yourself with positivity, with individuals who uplift and inspire. Cultivate an optimistic mindset, for in the soil of positivity, the seeds of greatness find fertile ground. Let us also confront the age-old nemesis called fear. Fear has a way of paralyzing us, keeping us confined within the familiar comfort of our comfort zones. But, my friends, growth and comfort are incompatible bedfellows. Challenge your fears head on, for beyond fear lies the undiscovered country of untapped potential and boundless opportunities. As we navigate this journey of self-discovery, let's dismantle the erroneous notion that success is synonymous with the accumulation of wealth or possessions. The true measure of success lies not in material acquisitions, but in the intangible qualities that define our character. Strive for personal growth, for the refinement of your character, and for the positive impact you can have on the world around you. Now, let's weave these principles into the fabric of our lives, creating a tapestry of purpose and meaning. Imagine a life where self-doubt is replaced by unwavering self-confidence, where procrastination gives way to the relentless pursuit of dreams, where negativity is eclipsed by the radiance of positivity, and where fear is transformed into the fuel that propels us towards our aspirations. Picture a world where success is redefined not as a mere accumulation of wealth, but as a journey of self-discovery and personal evolution. Envision a reality where the true measure of one's worth is not in the possessions they amass, but in the impact they have on the lives of others. In the grand tapestry of our transformative journey, let's delve deeper into the profound significance of the incremental changes that unfold within us. Picture the journey as a series of brush strokes on the canvas of our lives, each stroke contributing to the masterpiece of self-discovery. Every step taken towards our goals is akin to planting a seed of potential, nurturing it with determination, and watching it blossom into the vibrant flora of self-betterment. Consider the process of goal-setting not merely as a destination, but as a continuous evolution, a dynamic dance with the rhythms of personal growth. As we navigate the labyrinth of life's challenges, each obstacle overcome becomes a badge of honor, a testament to the resilience and unwavering determination that resides within us. We are not defined by the absence of obstacles, but by our ability to overcome. The journey, my esteemed friends, extends far beyond the metaphorical summit. It transcends the notion of reaching a destination and encapsulates the essence of becoming. It's about metamorphosing into the person capable of conquering mountains, both metaphorical and tangible. Consider, for a moment, the symbolism of conquering mountains. Mountains are formidable, towering structures that command respect and awe. They represent the challenges and aspirations we encounter in our lives. Conquering these mountains isn't just about reaching their peaks. It's about the profound transformation that occurs during the ascent. Think about the skills acquired, the wisdom gained, and the resilience developed as you climb each metaphorical mountain. The journey shapes you, molds you into someone who not only stands at the summit but understands the depth of the valleys traversed. It's about becoming the kind of person who doesn't shy away from challenges but welcomes them as opportunities for growth. Remember, diamonds are formed under pressure, and so are the strongest aspects of our character. So approach challenges with a sense of anticipation, not trepidation. Let's look at them as questions waiting to be answered, puzzles waiting to be solved. And as we solve them, let's celebrate the growth they bring, acknowledge our progress, and use it to fuel our journey forward. Challenges are an inevitable part of life, but how we respond to them defines our journey. They can be roadblocks, or they can be stepping stones. The choice is ours. Choose to see them as opportunities to demonstrate our resilience, our adaptability, our growth. With this mindset, there is no challenge too great, no obstacle too daunting. Together, let's embrace our challenges, transform them into opportunities, and in doing so, transform ourselves. The power of self-discipline, the mastery over procrastination and laziness, the strength of positive habits, and the ability to transform challenges into opportunities, these are your tools, your allies. What step can you take today, however small, that will move you closer to your goals? It might be setting a new goal, making a plan, or simply deciding to break free from old patterns. Whatever it is, the important thing is to start, to take that step with confidence and conviction. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Keep your eyes on the horizon, your dreams, your aspirations. They are not just fanciful hopes. They are destinations waiting to be reached.
And every step you take, no matter how small, is a step closer to those destinations. Embrace the journey with all its twists and turns. Each step, each challenge, each triumph is shaping you into the person you are meant to be. It's in the doing, the striving, the overcoming, that we truly grow. Celebrate your victories, learn from your setbacks, and always keep your eyes fixed on your goals. The path to success is not a straight line. It's a winding road filled with learning opportunities. Embrace these opportunities, for they are the experiences that will lead you to greatness. I urge you to hold on to the sense of purpose and passion that brought you here today. Let it be the fire that drives you forward, the light that guides your path. You have within you the strength, the determination, the resilience to overcome any obstacle and reach any summit. Believe in yourself and your ability to make a difference in your life and the lives of those around you. As we conclude, remember, this is not the end, but a beautiful beginning. A beginning of a life lived with intention, purpose, and relentless pursuit of excellence. Carry these lessons with you. Let them be the wind in your sails, propelling you towards your dreams. So go forth from here with a heart full of courage and a mindset on action. The world is waiting for your unique contributions, your dreams, your passion. You have everything you need to create the life you desire. It's time to take action, to make those dreams a reality. The journey ahead is yours to shape. Thank you for sharing this time with me. Now, let's go out there and make it happen. Your incredible journey awaits, and I can't wait to see where it takes you. Here's to your success, to your growth, and to the amazing life you're going to build. Let's make it a journey to remember. I used to belong to the 97% who couldn't be bothered even if it was easy. Here's my advice to you today. Walk away from the 97%. Don't talk like they talk. Don't act like they act. Don't go where they go. Don't specialize in what they specialize in. Throw away the blame game they cling to. Start a new life. You might say, well, is it as simple as getting a library card and joining the 3%? And the answer is, of course, yes. That's how easy this stuff is. It's so simple, it's not complex. You don't need a 2,000-year-old guru. You don't need multi-track affirmations. I'm telling you, affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion. Don't let somebody sweep you into some contrary way to nature itself. Nature says, unless you labor, the miracle of the seed and the soil and the seasons, and God, and all the other stuff that's available, sunshine and rain, that's not available to you by affirmation. It is only available to you by labor. So labor well, learn well, discipline yourself well, and you can have all the treasures you want. This stuff's easy and simple, it's not waves and seagulls. First thing you know, this whole scenario for you is spinning up instead of out of control on the negative side. This is all you've got to do. It's as simple as this. Start committing yourself to life change. And once you start down this road, I promise you, you'll join the 10% and the 3%. Guess how many people can retire from the income of their own personal resources when it comes time to retire? Answer. 5%. In the most independent country in the world, 95% are dependent, 5% are independent. Take charge of your own retirement. I'm telling you, if you take charge of your own retirement through personal development and all these skills we've taught today, take charge of your own retirement. You can multiply it at least by 5, maybe by 10, maybe by 20, maybe by 100. Let the government take care of it, some company take care of it, you've got to divide by 5. Take charge of your own life, take charge of your own day, take charge of your own conversation, take charge of your own family, take charge of your own possibilities, and learn these skills, develop this kind of strategy, and I'm telling you, life will open up for you. Join the 3%, join the 10%, join the 5%. Walk away from the 95%. Find out what poor people read and don't read it. I'm telling you, don't talk like they talk. Lend a helping hand, but don't fall into their poor philosophical scenario. Don't blame what they blame, don't use the excuses they use. It's called the language of the poor. Switch gears, switch language. Switch ideas, switch strategy. Start with the simplest of discipline, and don't be mean to any of these disciplines. The smallest of disciplines starts the process of life change. And if you'll invest in this thing called discipline, you can have whatever you wish. It's called the beginning of a miracle. We all must suffer one of two pains, regardless of your choice of life. The pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And what we suggest to everybody is to consider the disciplines, because disciplines weigh ounces, regrets weigh tons. 
You don't want to substitute a discipline for a regret. In our opinion, that would be a poor choice. Now, you can do it, but some things are poor trade-offs. The old prophet said, what if you gained the whole world, but it cost you your soul? Would that be worth it? And with a bit of intelligence, we say, no, that doesn't seem worth it. Even if you got the whole world, if you traded your soul, that experience would be so bitter and so awful and so devastating, it wouldn't be worth it. What if you got some gain by greed instead of legitimate ambition? I'm telling you, it might taste good up front, but it's going to turn bitter in the belly. Our world is, and always will be, a constant battle between the life of ease and its momentary rewards, and a life of discipline and its far more significant rewards. Each has its own price. The price of discipline or the price of regret. We will pay one or the other. One of my key phrases for the whole day. Disciplines work miracles. And here's the first piece that works miracles. 1. Do what you can do. Don't let neglect grab you by the throat. Don't let neglect stall you on your path toward prosperity and health. Be able to become powerful, influential, rich beyond wildest imagination. Don't neglect what you can do. If you can read, read. If you can change, change. If you can grow, grow. If you can take one step, take one step. Do not neglect to do whatever you can do at the moment. Of course, you can't run a multi-billion dollar business today. Mark couldn't either 10 years ago, Mark couldn't either 5 years ago. But I'm telling you, today he can do it, because step by step, year by year, he took on what he could do. He didn't neglect it, he did the meetings he could do, he made the calls he could make, he read the books he could read, he took the classes he could take. And step by step, he got himself ready. I'm telling you, do not neglect to do whatever you can do, because it'll work miracles of personal development. First, productivity. Second, now, do what you can. Here's two. Do the best you can. If it's a foggy night and you can only see a hundred feet, how can you see another hundred? Answer. Walk the first hundred feet. Walk as far as you can see, and then you can see some more. Then walk as far as you can see, and then you can see some more. So what you've picked up here, just do it as far as you can see it. Then I promise you, if you'll execute as far as you can see it, you'll be able to see more. Do that. Then you can see more, and finally, get in tune with doing the best you can. And you'll have the activity that'll develop the disciplines that will set this up so that you can say, it doesn't matter how the wind blows, I'm prepared. For some people, they see discipline as sort of an ugly word, you know? Don't talk to me about discipline. But what you must understand is, discipline is the most incredible creative force. Discipline builds a career. Discipline develops good health. Discipline forms the most incredible marriage. Discipline puts together a friendship that won't quit forever. Discipline develops skills that can be magnified, you know, in touch with the world. Disciplines open up music. You can't have incredible music without discipline. In fact, we call them the disciplines. We call architecture and music, and we call playing an instrument, we call sculpturing, we call painting, we call writing, composing, we call those the disciplines. And the disciplines give us the indication that, yes, it doesn't come except by discipline, but it also means that the discipline is the open door to the creative process, to turn nothing into something, and to turn imagination into reality. So here's what you must learn to do. Appreciate the disciplines and welcome the disciplines. Here's a good question to ask. What other discipline could I begin that would open up a whole new expression in my life of turning imagination into reality? Without discipline, there is no enterprise. Without discipline, there is no magnificent structure. Without discipline, there is no music. Without discipline, there is no health. You know, there is no advantage, there is no future. So discipline is all when it comes to imagination, having something real, believing in it, and turning it into reality. The key to development is to be all that you can possibly be. I don't know what your talents are. I don't know what your skills are. But here's what I probably am right on. That you're behind on an accelerated effort toward your full development. I would suggest that now, for some of you, I know that's probably really not true. But even as I look at my own life, because, you know, I'm tempted to procrastinate just like everybody else, you know? I should have written 30 books by now. I've only written 4 or 5. You know, I should have done a lot of things, but I haven't. You know, I got distracted. And all of us, you know, had these challenges. But what could I become? What could I become? I had one of my dearest friends. I've lost him. He died at age 53, one day, and he drank a little too much. 
David drank a little too much, but he did all kinds of things. He was a builder, and he was a dreamer, and he did a lot of things. But his drinking sort of kept him in the fog for like years and years. About six years ago, he was sitting at the yacht club, and he was in a fog. And suddenly, it occurred to him, I wonder what I could have accomplished all these years if I hadn't been in this sort of foggy state. And he said, that did it. In the last six years before he died, he was free, and he accomplished some incredible things the last six years. Being all that you can be and not let habits drag you down, not let things sidetrack you from the full development of what you have the capability of being. What all could your heart encompass if you really had the chance, and you really had the disciplines, and really got to it? What could you really become? What could you earn? How healthy could you really be? How many books could you write? How many poems could you write? So here's what I would ask of you. If you feel that you're a little bit stalled wherever you are in your progress, I'm asking you to correct that. I'm asking you to see if you can't possibly be on a more accelerated track toward your possibilities and your full development. Here's what life is all about. To become all that we can possibly be, the full development of all of your potential. That's number one. Number two is the wise use of all of your resources. That's what life is all about. Discipline. If there is a magic word that stands out above all the rest, this is the one. Discipline. Discipline is the bridge between thought and accomplishment, the bridge between inspiration and valuable achievement, the bridge between necessity and productivity. Remember, all good things are upstream. The passing of time takes us adrift, and drifting only brings us the negative, the disastrous, the disappointment, and the failure. Failure is not a cataclysmic event. It is not generally the result of one major incident, but rather a long list of accumulated little failings. Failing in life is failing to think today, failing to act today, failing to care, to strive, to climb, to learn, to keep trying day by day. If your goal requires that you write 10 letters today, and you write only 3, you are down 7 letters. If you want to make 5 calls, and you only make 1, you are down 4 on calls. If your plan calls for saving $10 today, and you save none, you're down $10 today. Now, the danger is looking at an undisciplined day and concluding that no great harm has been done. It doesn't seem like such a bad day. But add up these days to make a year, and then add up those years to make a lifetime. And perhaps you can now see how repeating today's small failures can easily turn your life into a major disaster. Success, on the other hand, is just the same process in reverse. If you plan to make 10 calls, and you end the day making 15, now you're up 5 calls. If you then get up a few on letters, move up to savings numbers, you can see what a massive difference it could make in a year, and what wealth and accomplishment awaits for a lifetime. Discipline is like a set of magic keys that unlocks all the doors of wealth, happiness, sophistication, culture, high self-esteem, pride, joy, accomplishment, satisfaction, and success. The first key to discipline is awareness of the need for and the value of discipline, and especially the discipline to make the changes. What will it take? What must I do? And what must I become to get all I want from my life? The second key is the willingness, more than that, the eagerness, to maintain your new discipline deliberately, wisely, consistently. And the third key to discipline is the commitment to master the circumstances of your daily life, to see and harness the opportunities, to make something of the sun and the rain, the good as well as what comes in the guise of misfortune. Discipline does many things, but most important of all is what it does for you. It makes you feel better about yourself. Even the smallest discipline can have an incredible effect on your attitude and the good feeling you get. That surging feeling of self-worth that comes from starting a new discipline is almost as good as the feeling that comes from the accomplishment of the discipline. Second, a new discipline immediately alters your life direction. You don't change destinations immediately, that is yet to come. But you can change direction immediately, and direction is very important. Third, discipline cooperates with nature. Everything strives. It is a common life function. How tall will a tree grow? As tall as it can. Everything strives to become all it can possibly be, and that striving to become is what discipline is all about. Disciplining ourselves to fulfill our natural potential, to become all that we can be. And finally, discipline attracts opportunity. Opportunity is always looking for ambition and skill and action. Discipline taps the unlimited power of commitment, the human will in action, driven by inspiration, enticed by desire, tempered by reason, guided by intelligence, can bring you to that high and lofty place called the good life.
Get some momentum going on your new commitment to the better life. See how many activities you can pile on in this first day. Go all out. Break away from the negative downward pull of gravity. Start the thrusters going. Prove to yourself that waiting is over, hoping is past, and that faith and action have now taken charge. It's a new day, a new beginning for your new life. With discipline, you can't believe the list of positive moves you can make in the first day of your new beginning. Here's the time to act. When the idea is hot and the emotion is strong. That's the time to act. You say, Mr. Ron, I'd like to have a library like yours. See, if you feel strong about that, what you've got to do is get the first book, and then get the second book before the feeling passes and before the idea gets dim. Action, pronto, action, immediate action, as soon as possible, because if you don't, here's what happens. We call it the law of diminishing intent. We intend to when the idea strikes us, we intend to when the emotion is high. But now, if you don't translate that into action fairly soon, now the intent starts to diminish, 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 and a month from now, it's cold. A year from now, it can't be found. So act, set up a discipline when the emotions are high and the idea is strong and clear and powerful. That's the time to set up the discipline. Somebody talks about good health and you're stirred, says right, I need to get a book on nutrition. Get the book before the idea passes and before the emotion gets cold. Go for the book, start the library, start the process. Fall on the floor, do some push-ups. Action, got to take action, otherwise the wisdom is wasted. Otherwise, the emotion soon passes unless you put it into a disciplined activity, capture it. Discipline is called how to capture the emotion and how to capture the wisdom and translate it into equity. Disciplines. Now, here's what's important about disciplines. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. Don't be naive in saying, well, this doesn't matter. I'm telling you, everything matters. There are some things that matter more than others, but there isn't anything that doesn't matter. Okay, we all pity the man who says, well, this is the only place I let down. Not true. The key to take home. Every letdown affects the rest of your performance. Every letdown affects the rest. This is part of the educational process on personal development. If you don't take a walk around the block, you probably won't do the apple a day. If you don't do the apple a day, you probably won't consistently start building your library. If you don't build your library, you probably won't keep a journal, and you won't take pictures, and you won't do wise things with your money, won't do wise things with your time, won't do wise things with your possibilities and relationships. And the first thing you know, six years of that accumulated, and we say, you have messed up. So the whole key to reversing that process now is to start picking up these disciplines. Now, here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects the rest of your disciplines. Every new one affects the rest. That's why action is so important. The least action, the smallest action, take it because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return from that one action, it'll inspire you to do the next one and the next one and the next one. You start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to get an apple. Get an apple, it'll inspire you to get a book. Get a book, it'll inspire you to get a journal. Get a journal, it'll inspire you to grow, develop some skills. All disciplines affect each other. Every lack affects the rest. Every new affects the rest. The key is to diminish the lack and set up the new, and you've started a whole new life process.